300,000 years after the Big Bang, the period from the birth of atoms to the ignition of the first stars is known as the Dark Ages. What happened in this era and the subsequent cosmic renaissance as starlight filled the universe is an intricate puzzle. Astronomers are solving it by analyzing the remnant radiation of the Big Bang and using the world's most powerful telescopes to peer to the edges of the universe. At an age of 350,000 years, the universe was full of photons and radiation streaming in all directions. Atoms of hydrogen and helium, neutrinos, and other dark matter were also present. At a blistering temperature of 4,900 degrees Fahrenheit and full of radiation, astronomers see no light if they try to peer back to that moment. The reason is that the universe has expanded it has stretched the wavelengths of radiation by a factor of a thousand. The photons reach Earth not as visible light, but as low energy photons of cosmic microwave background radiation. Their wavelength, once characteristic of the fireball of the universe, is now that of a cold object with a temperature of negative 404 degrees Fahrenheit. Earth will never receive visible light from the period before the first stars ignited, a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. However, cosmologists can reconstruct what happened during that time using other data, such as those of the cosmic microwave background radiation. The radiation reveals tiny fluctuations in the density of matter at the time the first atoms were formed. Cosmologists say that gravity, working on these ripples, caused the matter to begin forming into clumps and strands. These irregularities in the initial cloud of matter laid the framework of present-day large-scale objects such as galaxy superclusters. The development of these structures over billions of years has been simulated with computers. These simulations rely on assumptions about the density and properties of matter, including dark matter, in the infant universe as well as the influence of dark matter, a force opposing gravity. Some simulations closely resemble the distribution of matter seen in the universe today. The early universe consisted of hydrogen and helium with a trace of lithium. Today it still consists mainly of hydrogen and helium, however stellar processes have boosted the contribution from other chemical elements to more than 2%. Astronomers are still trying to pinpoint when the very first stars ignited and in what type of early galactic structures that this may have occurred. Recent infrared studies with instruments such as Spitzer Space Telescope and Very Large Telescope have revealed what seems to be very faint galaxies with extremely high red shift existing as little as 500 million years after the Big Bang. A red shift is a shift towards longer wavelengths and the spectral lines emitted by a celestial object that is caused by the object moving away from Earth. Their existence indicates that well-developed precursor knots and clumps of condensing matter have existed as little as 100 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. The first stars, which formed 200 million years after the Big Bang, consisted almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. Virtually no other chemical elements were present. Physicists say that star-forming nebulae that lacked heavy elements condensed into larger gas clumps than those of today. The stars forming from those clumps would have been extremely large and hot, possessing perhaps 100 to 1,000 times the mass of our Sun. Many would have lasted only a few million years before dying as supernova. Ultraviolet light from these stars triggered a key moment in the evolution of the universe, the reionization of its hydrogen 
turning it from a neutral gas back into the ionized or electrically charged form we see today. Further still, radiation from quasars, which are star-like emitters of radio waves that can illuminate 100 times that of our galaxy, have reionized our current universe. During the course of their lives and deaths, the first massive stars created and dispersed new chemical elements into space and into other collapsing proto-galactic clusters. A myriad of new elements such as carbon, oxygen, silicon, and iron were formed from nuclear fusion in the hot cores of these stars. Elements heavier than iron such as barium and lead were formed during their violent deaths. Second and third generation stars, smaller than the primordial megastars, later formed from enriching interstellar medium. These stars created more of the heavier elements and returned them to their interstellar medium via stellar winds and supernovas. Galactic mergers and the stripping of gas from galaxies led to further intergalactic mixing and dispersion. These processes of recycling and enrichment continues in the cosmos today. In the Milky Way galaxy, the new heavier elements have been essential to the forming of objects from rocky planets to living organisms. <laughs>